Well, welcome to St. John's. Things, as you can see, look a little different around here, I think, with the coronavirus and the encouragement to stay home. Uh, obviously, we've got an empty sanctuary, and so we're switching things up in an attempt to recognize that what we're sharing with you as we continue to provide learning opportunities, worship opportunities, is not going to look the same as it would be on a Sunday morning. So you're probably watching this, listening to this, as you're at home in your living room or on your computer, on your TV. And so from this space, which we've tried to create into more of a living room space, we're hoping to share a conversation with you and lead you in a time of worship until we're able to gather together as a large group again. So let me begin us with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that even in your word where it says two or three are gathered together, there you are with them. And certainly it's nice to gather as a large group, but we recognize even from a space of social distancing, uh, you are still present to us. And so in this time, as we share, as we gather around your word, unite our hearts with each other as we anticipate those times where we'll be able to share those meals once again around a table with each other, with you being present. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to play a song for you at this time and just invite you to reflect upon these words. Use it as a time of worship and we'll come back on the other side and we'll begin to take a look at God's word for us today. So in the season of Lent, our theme has been, this is the feast, our midweek worship services, focusing on the hospitality that Jesus shares around tables in others' homes. And so our reading tonight is from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Let's pray before we unpack this a little bit more. Father, we want to 
choose what is better. We want to choose what is best. So help us to, as we refocus on your word tonight, to reprioritize our lives around it. In your name we pray. Amen. So back when I was in college, I did youth ministry in a congregation. And I remember one of the activities that I planned was called Bigger or Better. And essentially, each group started with a penny. And then they were encouraged to go around the community, knock on doors. And by the way, this was in inner city St. Paul, so I'm not so sure 20 years later if I would still be doing this. But it worked then. So they were given a penny, were encouraged to knock on doors and to explain, we're doing this game called Bigger or Better, we have a penny, do you have anything that's bigger or better than this? And eventually they found that the best place to knock on doors was along Summit Avenue in St. Paul, these big mansions. And you should have seen some of the things that they got. Yes, they, they did get a few looks, like, what, what are you guys doing? But one of the groups came back with a nice-looking, full-size couch, which we then added to our youth room. And it's that whole concept of what's better that I want to talk about with you today. What's better? It's really a, a question of priorities. Making a choice between something that might be good and something that might be better or best for us, especially when it comes to hosting a meal, when it comes to hospitality. What's a better hospitality? That's what we want to focus on in our time together. And to do that, we want to take a look at a story of a meal that Jesus shares in the home of Mary and Martha. The story is recorded for us in Luke chapter 10. And, and it's set in a little village called Bethany. Bethany is about two miles outside of Jerusalem. And, and it was thought that Jesus would frequently spend time teaching during the day in Jerusalem. And then he would travel to Bethany, to the home of his friends, Mary and Martha, to spend some quiet evenings there, getting some rest and relaxation. And you look at this story, and it starts with something good that Martha does. I realize Martha's going to get a little bit of a bad rap throughout the story, but what I want to recognize it starts with her doing something good. It says in verse 38 that Martha opened her home to him. This is where hospitality starts, right? Like we're actually able to open our home to somebody else, to allow them to come into our home. And I know this is kind of an ironic conversation to be having during the midst of the coronavirus outbreak where we're actually encouraging social distancing and not inviting other people into our home. But originally during Lent, our invitation to you as we go through this series, This is the Feast, is to invite other people into your home, is to host them in your home. And so this is where it starts. Martha has opened her home to Jesus and all of his disciples. But then, where's her younger sister? Where's Mary? Well, Mary's in the living room, and she's sitting there at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he said, hanging on his every word. And where's Martha? Martha's standing in the kitchen. So you've got these two sisters. One of them is standing in the kitchen making all of these preparations. The other one is sitting in the living room listening to Jesus. And you can already see the tension beginning to mount here. You know, I think about hospitality, and really there's two different elements to hospitality. And I've realized that my wife and I both place a high value on hospitality, but we tend to view it differently. So for her, hospitality means having everything clean and cooking a great meal. So often, she's the one who's in the kitchen getting everything ready. For me, hospitality is all about the socializing. And so 
I'm often the one who's in the living room. And this is what happens with Mary and Martha. You've got Martha who's in the kitchen and Mary who's in the living room and things are about to erupt. Because Martha's making all of these preparations. And then she looks and she sees her sister sitting there at the feet of Jesus and she slams down her cooking bowl and she pushes open the door and she looks at Jesus and she says this, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to come and help me. Woo. Now, I don't know a lot, but I do know that it's probably not a good idea to yell at Jesus and to tell him what to do. So how does Jesus respond to all of this? What we're going to see is he redirects her priorities. He says, Martha, Martha, you're worried, you're upset, you're distracted by many things. You know, earlier in this text, it says that that Martha was distracted by all the preparations. I've got to believe, looking at this story, that Jesus has a level of love for Martha. He looks at her and he realizes the good thing that she's doing. Because he just showed up. It's probably not like he gave word ahead of time, like, hey, I'm going to come. So she didn't have time to get everything ready. And so Jesus shows up with a bunch of hungry young men And initially, I'm sure she wanted to spend that time with him, but then she looks into the kitchen and realizes, I've got to provide something for him. Plus, I'm living in in a Middle Eastern culture that places a high value on hospitality. Like, I can't just pull some leftovers out of the fridge. I can't just, you know, order something to be delivered. Like, I've got to pull out the fine china. I've got to provide the best of the best. And so Martha's trying to do the right thing. And Jesus, I think, as he looks at her, says, Martha, I get it. I get where you're coming from. I get your concern. But I want you to realize that Mary has chosen what is better. And it won't be taken away from her. You know, here's, here's what we need to remember. The point of hospitality is hosting people. It's about the relationships. Yes, the preparations matter. Yes, the time in the kitchen matters. But ultimately, the end focus is on your presence is on sharing those relationships, those conversations with each other. And so you look at the story, and who's chosen what is better? It's Mary. Mary's chosen to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to him. Can you relate at all to this story? You know, I know I sure can. Because I think we get pulled away and we get distracted by all kinds of things. And we can relate to Martha. And we have in us this pressure to perform, this set of expectations. And so as we invite other people into our homes, we have the sense of what it should look like. And everything needs to be just right. And we want to make sure that everything is clean and that that the right mood is set. And the right food is placed upon the table. And yet I wonder, I wonder if sometimes we get so caught up in the ascetics, in all of the preparations that we forget that the focus needs to be upon people. See, I believe this story is an invitation for us to reprioritize, to realize what matters most. And I continue to learn that everything rises or falls on relationships. It's 
not just about the food that's on the table, it's about everyone who's gathered around that table. And I know, yeah, it, it's kind of ironic that, yes, we've invited you to host meals throughout Lent. And now we're being told to keep our social distance from each other. But one day, once again, we will be able to gather around each other's tables. And in the meantime, this is a pause point for us to simply ask, what is our focus? What are our priorities? Because I believe that a time of crisis leads to moments of clarity. And so here we are. Living these lives which are busy and distracted and overscheduled. And what matters most? It's relationships. So I believe we have a couple of unique opportunities right now in the midst of this. One, we have an opportunity like Mary to sit at the feet of Jesus. To listen to him. To learn from him because we've pretty much been told to stay home. Now we have no excuse, we have time. Use that time to focus on your relationship with Jesus. We also have an opportunity for those of us who have families to sit at home with them, to reprioritize our relationship with them. You know, I wanna close by talking about an experience that I had recently. I don't think I have to tell you that in the midst of the coronavirus outbreak that there's been a lot of decisions that have had to be made and a lot of information that we're trying to make sense of and things are constantly changing and so for us as a church we're trying to take in all of this information and make the best decisions for the sake of the ministry here at St. John's. And there have been a number of days where I have come home and I've been exhausted. And this last week, I, I went home and I asked my wife, hey, where are the kids? She said, oh, they're in the kitchen. They've been getting supper ready since 2 o'clock. They've got a special meal that they're planning for you. And I'm telling you, they went all out. They came out, they had their aprons on, and they said, yeah, we've got a four-course meal that we put together for you, Daddy. We've got pretzel bites, and we've got a poppy seed strawberry peanut salad. We've got pasta, and for dessert, we've got a brownie with powdered sugar on top of it, and ice cream and cookie crumbs. And that meant a lot to me to see all of the work and all of the preparations that they made. That was a good thing. It was a Martha moment. But I gotta tell you, what I appreciated most was the hour that we spent around the dinner table together. It was the time that we spent laughing and talking with each other and I could just set aside the worries of that particular day and focus on what matters most. It was good that they made all these preparations. It was better to have their presence with me when I needed them. So may we use this time to assess our hospitality, to answer the question, what's better? And may we see that while spending time in the kitchen making preparations is good, it's ultimately the time in the dining room, in the living room, where we gather together with others that matters most. Everything rises or falls on relationships. So choose at this time to reprioritize your relationship with Jesus, to sit at his feet just like Mary. Until, as we come out of this, we're able to gather together around each other's tables. Celebrate that. Amen. Let's turn to a time of prayer.
Father, constantly we're forced to ask that question, what's better? And every day we make choices. And right now, Lord, I believe that this is a time where our priorities are being refined and redirected. Lord, I pray that it's a time that we're redirected toward you. I pray that we can, like Mary, just choose to sit, choose to sit at your feet, choose to listen to you, to learn from you. Father, I pray that for those of us who have families, that we're able to gather with them around a table. We're able to carve out more time for them. We don't have to get caught up in trying to make sure that things are perfect as we host others. But we're just focused on being present to each other, even as you are fully present to us. God, continue to guide us through this uncertain time. Continue to point us to your word. Give us that confidence that you will continue to speak to us. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus, as he's taught and invited us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you go forth to reprioritize your life around a relationship with Jesus, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God as your Father, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. So as we close our time of worship, then I invite you to listen and to reflect upon one more song. See ya. It's good to see you. It's good to be seen. It's good to be seen and known together, even in this way. And today as we wrap up, we remember that Jesus invites us right now and each and every day to reprioritize, to center our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our thoughts upon Christ. And so, no matter which person we are, Mary or Martha, Hutch, you, wherever you are, we can pace the day in a spirit of rest, the rest that we have in Christ and Jesus and the forthcoming peace that we get to know, a peace that surpasses understanding and yet is there for us. So let's rest a little bit and meditate upon Psalm 23.
Merci.